From the high desert and the great American Southwest, I bid you all good evening, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world's time zones, each and every one covered by this program, Midnight in the Desert. Got such a nice sound about it, doesn't it? The desert is kind of cool, relatively for the desert, and uh, calm this night, very nice indeed. Rules of our program are very, very simple. The rules are but two. No bad language. Let me repeat that. No bad language and only one call per show. And that constitutes our rules. Now, get this. For the second, you know, California was in big trouble. Actually, all of us here in the West were in big trouble, are in big trouble because of the drought. I mean, out here in the desert, even the cactus is not looking so good. But for the second straight month, Californians actually exceeded their water conservation mandates during the relentless drought without the state having to impose a penny of fines. In fact, cities in California cut water by a combined 31 percent in July, exceeding the governor's widest expectations. He had, uh, I think, called for 25 percent. So, I don't know what they're doing in California. Maybe they're drinking the hard stuff. I don't know. Donald Trump is uh, back up in the polls yet again. And, of course, he has exposed a very deep rift inside the Republican Party, one that goes deeper than the one that goes through California and threatens to erupt one day. And the Republican Party, they don't know what to do. They don't like the 11 million illegals that are in the country right now. But I think they're so full of Donald Trump, so to speak, that they are ready to deal with it as a party. Uh, in other words, um, they're using code words for, you know, we better deal with the status of the 11 million living in the country now. So I guess he has pushed them a bit. I got this from somebody. First of all, Roswell's art, longtime fan, good to have you back, always, of course. Right? Yesterday, I stumbled upon a thread on Reddit detailing what I must say is the most incredible set of stories I've ever read, a man identifying himself as a search and rescue worker in an unnamed national park area. Many of these stories now are similar to the ones told in the Missing 411 series of books, which I'm sure you uh, are familiar with, I am. Stories of mysterious disappearances, strange entities in the woods, among others, but here's the one that got me. Strange staircases now are seemingly appearing from nowhere. Staircases, really. All search and rescue park rangers staff are told not to talk about them and never to go near. So I was enthralled. Many other people have chimed in to corroborate the story, including uh, Native Americans, hikers, and others. I think you should check it out. It's incredible. I have... So I'll just put that out in the ether, and if any of you know anything about strange staircases appearing in national parks, then I, I want to hear about it. I want to mention one other thing that's really been bugging me every day, every day, every day since we did this. Remember how I said that uh, what John Lear said to me long ago about going to the darkness instead of the light. He said, the light is a trick. Go to the darkness. That's been with me for years. The guy planted that in my brain, and it won't go away. And there was, likewise, something the other day that was said that just, I cannot shake it. Do you remember he said that a lot of four-year-olds, 
we had a doctor on uh, discussing four-year-olds, and they, they say things that sometimes blow people away, you know, about other lives and that kind of stuff, right? But that's not what got me. What got me was, he said, four-year-olds sometimes tell stories about levitating. Now, that one really, really hit me, because I remember about that age, I... I'm sorry, but I remember levitating. I remember being able to float. Now, maybe it is something just psychologically indigenous to a four-year-old. <laughs> I have no idea. And maybe even fly. I, I remember, I think, flying. But I know for sure I remember levitating. And somebody said that on a show a few days ago, and it just has stuck with me, remembering it. I wonder if any of the other rest of you, all of you, got hit the, the same way. All right. What is coming up in a moment? I want to, um, as strongly as I can, make a point here. This is not an infomercial. The doctor coming on is not selling anything. Indeed not. And I think because other shows do that kind of thing where they're peddling something or whatever, uh, you might think that's what this is going to be, and it's not. He's not selling anything. Dr. Ronald Platts, who I have interviewed now several times, years ago, MD, DO, he coined the term anti-aging medicine. It is, in fact, recognized, he is, in fact, recognized as a leading authority in the new clinical science of anti-aging medicine. Since not, uh, 1981, Dr. Klatz has been integral in the pioneering exploration of new therapies for the treatment and prevention of age-related degenerative diseases. I've got some of those. He is the uh, physician founder and president of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. In his capacity as A4M president, Dr. Klatz oversees AMA slash ACCME approved continuing medical education programs for more than a hundred thousand physicians, holy moly, and health practitioners and scientists from all over the world. That would be a hundred and five countries worldwide. So coming up in a moment is Dr. Klatz and, uh, he is an amazing guy. So stay right where you are, and we'll talk about, well, the possibility of many of you not growing much older than you are right now. Does that sound appealing or scary? I wonder. We'll be right back. On the wild side of midnight, from the kingdom of Nye, this is Midnight in the Desert with Art Bell. Please call the show at 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. All right, now, Dr. Klotz will tell you about his purple and yellow get young pills, right, Doctor? <laughs> just kidding. Sure, Art, uh, but I have more than just purple and yellow. <laughs> just kidding, anyway. Um... You know, there are so many, I'm sorry, but but fraudulent things going on in the world of uh, anti-aging medicine that I, you know, I want to go out of my way for people well, to know. Well, let's be fair, Art. Let's say there's, I'm there's, being a fair. Lot of, there's a lot of strange stuff going in the world of anti-aging marketing. Anti-aging okay. medicine is a little bit different. Oh, that's time. okay. I guess that is kind of fair, but I know there are supplements out there. Mm-hmm. That that may not be of the strength that really causes uh, two days to come off your life, frankly. Well, you know, look, as I say, there's anti-aging medicine, which I'm completely responsible for, and I take full responsibility for, uh, as I'm the physician founder of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, which is a professional medical society, which, right. you know, has been around for 25 years now and has really changed the face of healthcare. 
Uh, if you remember what it was like, and I know you do, Art, some 25 years ago, doctors were losing their licenses for prescribing vitamin C or <laughs> exercise or... Uh, yeah, uh, actually, FBI, FBI was raiding health food joints. All kinds of things were going oh, on. Oh, yeah, right? yeah. Bo- uh, ha- you, know, uh, you know, guns drawn, uh, yep. people led away in handcuffs. So it was, a, it was a, a pretty dark age. I know. Those vitamins are dangerous. You've got to go in... Dangerous in, things, in, yeah. Oh, with the heat, you know. <laughs> Anyway, so so we created, myself and a handful of other physicians, created the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. Again, different from anti-aging marketing. Now, it's just such a good term that the marketers glommed onto it. And, uh, you know, a lot of vitamins have been sold and a lot of other products have been sold. And I can't disagree with you. You know, some of them are are fairly worthless, Mm. uh, but a lot of them are not. And so, uh, you know, but, but again, you know, anti-aging medicine is what the doctors do. And that's pretty good, str- that's pretty strong, straightforward scientific stuff, at least the doctors of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. And we're now in 120 countries around the world and associated with a bunch of major medical uh, universities and offering advanced degrees and master levels and even Ph.D. level. Uh, degree. So, I mean, anti-aging medicine is a little bit different than anti-aging marketing. But I agree with you. You've got to be careful with anti-aging marketing because it's so easy to make claims. Okay, well, I get a lot of spam every day. And I guarantee you four or five of them are about how to arrest aging now. Guaranteed. Right. Guaranteed. Well, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that has not been the happiest part of my life and the ha- happiest part of my legacy. But... Uh, you know, I'm willing to accept that compared with the way it used to be. Just before we get into all of this, I want to say that I think that the American medical community right now is a disastrous mess, that uh, American medicine is a disastrous mess. We're very good at it, don't get me wrong. We come up with the, the newest of the new. I'll give us that. Otherwise, we suck, and I really mean that, and I, I'm going to lay out why I think that, okay? Okay. Um, if I've got something wrong with me, uh, and I need to have an, uh, an elective kind of operation, something serious and expensive, and oh, God, it's expensive, doctor. That's what's wrong with what oh, we're doing here. Yes. Okay, yes, so I'm better off, frankly, getting on an airplane, booking a flight to Bangkok, Mm-hmm. where I can get a hospital that's every bit as modern with doctors that have been trained right here in the U.S. to do the operation, yes. pay for my week or two in Bangkok, and fly home and still have lots and lots of money left over. That's one point. point I can't argue with you, Art. Okay, yeah, that's, point, that's point. The basis of That's the basis of medical tourism. Yeah, okay, point two. Um, just last time I went to the doctor, I thought, you know, I'm going to I'm going to give uh the little blue pill a try. Okay? Okay. And so I said, "Let let, let me try it." And he wrote up I think what was it? It was a prescription for I don't know, 10 or 20 of them or something like that. It came to some I think it was 20. It came to 400 bucks. $400. Are you kidding me? You know what I yeah. did? You know what I did? Uh, or what, let's say, somebody could have done? They could have gone online, doctor, and ordered the same little blue pills made by the same people mm-hmm. from India for about... About $2.35 or, and 35 cents a pill. About 46 cents a pill. Oh, 40. Well, you're a better shopper than I am, Art. <laughs> I, I, I didn't exactly say I did. I said... That's the case. Now, so I'm angry. I'm really angry. I, frankly, doctor, some people, friends of mine, have become ill here in uh, Peru, which is a you know a very rural community, uh, and they've got to be helicoptered into Las Vegas. Right. And the horror stories just never end. The uh, the the cost of the helicopter to go from here to there, like twenty grand, something like that. Oh my um, God. Then. Uh, some outrageous figure. It may not be exactly 20, but it's, it's right but up there. So it's, it's, it's okay. Up there, and sure. then you get to the hospital where when they bill you, you know, if you're not dead from whatever you went over for, 
you're going to look at the bill and probably die on the spot. Yeah. So well, I, I, there, I that's out of my question? system. It's out of my system. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Can I ask a question? Sure. How did I get to be the uh, uh, the the apologist for the uh, uh, conventional medicine establishment? I'm the I'm the I'm the on the other side of the coin. You're just a I'm doctor, and so I'm I'm taking it out on you. <laughs> I, I took it out. By the way, I took it out on my own doctor, and he said, "Yeah, man, I agree with you." You know, so. It's, it's, we're, 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 we're the answer are the uh, anti-aging doctors, uh, the uh, the anti-aging doctors, the guys who are part of uh, the new paradigm of healthcare. We're part of the answer, not part of the problem. I'm, I, you know, I'm, you're 100 percent right. The system is broken. The system is broken beyond repair. Right. And you have a guy by the name of uh, you know Obama who decides to do Obamacare, which just pumps steroids into the old system. Yeah. I, you know, I can't really even argue with that. I, under Obamacare, my insurance has gone up substantially. I mean, really substantially. I've got Medicare. What do I care? My wife and my child, theirs has gone up substantially, and they're healthy as little horses. Well, I won't tell you about my situation. Well, yes, I will. Okay, I'm a physician. I'm healthy, right? Yes, uh, I'm. Well, not I mean, that, I don't know that for I'm sure. I'm not that old. Well, just take my word for it. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm a doctor. Do say, take my word for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm a doctor. Anyway, trust I, me. Yeah, exactly. So you know, um, I'm paying about a thousand dollars a month for health care just for me, not for my family, just for me. Now I had to go to see a doctor the other day. Uh, you know, uh, a colleague, if you will. Because I had a sore throat, and I was very concerned because I had a little nodule in my throat. And I said, well, it's not supposed to be there. Yep. I just wanted to take a look at it with a little scope he has. It takes him all of five minutes at most. Professional courtesy? I, that's what I was expecting, frankly, when I walked in the door. But, oh, no. Oh, no, they can't no. do that. They have to call my insurance company. <laughs> my insurance company has to, it tells them they have to charge me the uh, the the minimum, you know, the, the whatever it is. They, they take a percentage or whatever. And I'm in there for, it should have been less than five minutes, but I was in there for all of maybe about 12 minutes. I looked at my watch uh, because for eight of those 12 minutes, he had to write a medical record. He had to make notes oh, yeah. because he's not allowed to see me without making notes. Now, even though most of the time we've spent looking at the notes, making the notes, playing with the computer, he only spent two minutes really looking down my throat and saying, ah, it's nothing, yeah. don't worry, it'll go away, just, you know, use an acid, you'll be fine, a little reflux, you'll be fine, don't worry about it. Okay. You're lucky your insurance company didn't see the word nodule and go, oh, going to have to cancel this guy. Okay. In spite of the fact that I had the best health insurance that you can buy, yes. I'm paying $1,000 a month premiums. Uh -huh. I don't know what the doctor billed the insurance company, but my end of it was over $100 just for those five minutes. Now, that would be okay, but that was just my deductible. Now, the only reason why that whole thing has, so I'm assuming God. that his billing was in the neighborhood of three or four or five hundred dollars. And the only reason why that happened was that he was not allowed to just see me on professional courtesy. The insurance companies and the situation has, you know, has gotten to the point where there is no wiggle room anymore. And where everybody's running scared and everybody is just running down the track and with their eyes closed off the precipice. Well, well, doctor, I would feel sorry for you, except that you simply got a dose of your own. <laughs> you know, right? I mean, that, that's what it boils down to. My point is this. The system is broken. The system is broken for everyone. If I was on Obamacare, by the way, and this is the person next to me was, their deductible was $12. Wow. Which is... I, I, I'm, you know, good. You know, God bless the person next to me. My whole point is that the system is upside down, sideways. You know, inside out. It's broken. We're dealing with a system that is in desperate need of repair, and the reason for it is is because we have made medicine into the business of medicine. It's no longer the profession of medicine. Yeah. It's the business of medicine, and so it's being run 
for the profit motive, and the profit motive maximizes the bills, maximizes the amount of care that you have to receive, maximizes the amount of uh, paperwork, and it's all upside down, inside out, and there is no focus at all on the cure and very little focus on the even the diagnosis. By the way, I you know I do want to say uh, while I'm moaning and groaning about Obamacare's hiking up my insurance costs, mm-hmm. I still have sympathy with the idea of getting everybody who needs it medical care. I don't maybe it was the wrong way to do it, but I everybody you know we're a rich it. country and we damn well ought to be able to take care of our people. Everybody can have decent medical care. If we were to spend money on prevention, which is what anti aging medicine is really all about, it's really a euphemism for And we'll uh, get there. You know, let me medicine. tell you something. I was in the Philippines, right? Yes. I lived in the I still have a condo in Manila. Um, the Philippines is a poor country. A lot of the uh, the majority of the citizens in the Philippines subsist on a a, de- a dollar a day or two dollars a day or less. I mean, that's what you would call a poor country. It's, it's slowly getting better and better. But even in the Philippines, they have what's called Phil Care. It's national health care, and people aren't going broke because it exists. Mm-hmm. I, I guess my rant is done. You know, you know, even Americans who go to live there can have Phil Care. <laughs> okay. I mean, what is wrong with us? What's wrong with us is that um, we just will not take charge. We will not fix something when it's broken. We will let the politicians run the run the ship onto the rocks and grind it to you know, and just grind the system and grind the system and grind the system as long as the people will pay. That's what's wrong with us. And uh, until the public takes charge and says no more you know we need to we need to to revolutionize this system we need to do something that works as opposed to continuing on with something that doesn't work yeah but it's it's, it's, it's a, the same it's a seller's market and by that i mean if you get sick if you've got nodules in your throat or mm-hmm. little things poking out in your body where they ought not to be you don't right. have any damn choice you have to go to the doctor and and or the hospital and you have to partake of the system so it's a seller's market and but this... the seller is not the doctor you see that's what the public doesn't understand the doctor is as much the as much the the victim as the patient and i know that's hard for a lot of people to get but doctors incomes are down 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 the doctor an average doctor in america is earning less today than he was twenty years ago. I actually believe that. All right, fine. Let me make you the health czar. No such thing. Uh, in fact, I'll make you the health dictator. And you are now uh, allowed to do anything you want, uh, and I mean anything at all, to fix our health care system. What would you do? First thing I would do is I would put the FDA back to its original role, which was uh, the protection of, uh, of food. Uh, and for the protection of uh, dangerous drugs, uh, for adverse side effects of drugs, not for uh, you know uh, this 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 octopus-like uh, you know tentacles into every aspect of the healthcare system, which they do not belong. I would re- I would replace the FDA uh, and put them back to their original intent. Okay, that would be number one, and that would free up a lot of, of innovation and opportunity in healthcare because the regulatory, the over-regulatory effect of, uh, of, of FDA in protecting the pharmaceutical industry, because the FDA has become the watchdog for the pharmaceutical industry, not the watchdog for the public. The public doesn't understand that, but that's the way it is. Okay, what else? Do that, you would uh, drop healthcare. Uh, you drop uh, healthcare costs quite dramatically, and you would allow for the importation of drugs from overseas that are very effective, that work well, that are not dangerous, um, and that uh, could do an awful lot for healthcare in the U.S. Uh, the second thing that I would do is I would. Um, I would provide for a uh, a one payer that you could opt into. You didn't. You weren't required to, but you could opt into a one payer health care system. And so you could have a basic level of health care that was provided for you, 
at a very reasonable price to this one payer health care system. It national little, national health care system. It would be similar to national health care. Okay. But it would be optional. It would be it wouldn't be enforced and it wouldn't be imposed upon you. It would be something All right, yeah. What about the people that opt out and then walk into a county hospital uh and the county hospital has to take care of them, right? That's fine. So the county hospital should be taking care of them. And for the people who, who opt out of the system and who are willing to accept what they get at a, at a county hospital, well, that's probably just about right, because county hospitals are places where we train doctors. They're places where uh, you're not going to get the concierge-type medical care that you may want. You are not going to get the type of, uh, of, uh, of uh, comfort medicine or aesthetics or, uh, you know, latest cutting-edge uh, uh, therapies that you might want, but right, it's a okay. place where you can go where you're going to get at least decent, uh, fair, and uh, uh, life saving medicine. And right. I think that's All the right. role of the county hospital. Dr. Holtheim, we'll, we'll be right back. Got plenty of time in a show like this. It's why they call it Long Form Talk Radio. I'm Art Bell. When I think back on all the crap I learned. It's a wonder I can think at all. Take a walk on the wild side of midnight. From the Kingdom of Nye, this is Midnight in the Desert with Art Bell. Please call the show at 1-952-225-5278. That's 1-952-CALL-ART. It is. Right now, we've got Dr. Um, Ron Klatz. He's our guest, and I beat the hell out of him in the first half hour here. Not him, actually. The medical system. And uh, what you're going to, about to hear, as soon as we begin talking about anti-aging medicine, which really is now, you're going to hear stuff that is not an infomercial. I want to repeat that. It's not. We don't do these on this network. At least I don't uh, and won't ever. This is real. What you're going to hear is real. It's about the state of anti-aging medicine nationally, and he is the right man to be talking about this. So, uh, Dr. Klatz, welcome back. Oh, well, thank you, Art. All right, so a listener has a comment, and then we'll launch. But really, this is relevant. It's John. And he said, Art, I remember from one of the old interviews that you did with Dr. Klatz that he said something like, if you can hold out for another 30 years... Then the technology for infinite life extension will be here. Now, uh, that might have been... I don't think I said infinite life extension. What, said well, life extension, okay, like that's 120 right. 120 years of age. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, he yeah. says, I wonder, are we still on track? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we're going faster than I ever thought we would. Um, right now, okay, let me back up for a second. When I said that, that was about um, 19, I think the last time we did a show together, you and I, was uh, 1998, somewhere around there. Sounds about right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, life expectancy in the United States at that time was about mm, pushing 80 years of age. Uh, now it's, uh, now it's, uh, excuse me, it was uh, like 78 years of age. Now it's like... Uh, uh, just over 80 years of age, and um, in uh, in Monaco, uh, which has the highest per capita number of anti-aging physicians in the world, it also has the highest per capita number of millionaires. Interestingly enough, so I guess you have to have some <laughs> anti-aging, unfortunately. But um, life expectancy is now pushing a 91 years of age. But Monaco, interestingly, doesn't have the highest life expectancy. The place that has the highest life expectancy on the planet right now is, you ready, Art? Okinawa. No. Uh, the the Greek Bible. Islands. One more time, Art. Greek Islands? No, no. Well, I'll give you one more shot. Uh, uh, I know it's not L.A. Sorry, it's not L.A. 
<laughs> what? What? What is it? All right, I don't how know. About, that. How about Bergen County, New Jersey? The Ber- Bergen excuse County me? women. If Ber- you're a woman what? living in Bergen County, chances are you're Asian. Chances are you are um, a, a college educated. Chances are you have a management degree, uh, a, a job in management, and that you follow a anti aging lifestyle or a Chinese traditional Chinese medicine lifestyle of advanced prevention, and that has led to a life expectancy for the Asian County ladies, and this has been published by Harvard University and by the state of New Jersey, uh, of a life expectancy of ninety one and a half years of age. That's for women. All right. That contrasts with uh, with women living in South Dakota, who happen to be American Indians, okay. who are getting free health care, who are getting you know through Indian Health Services, they get free health care, right. they get free medical care, they get free doctor, free drugs, free hospital, free, free, free across the board, and their life expectancy is drum roll, sixty eight years of age. Wow. So that's a 20-something, almost 25-year anti-aging dividend. Okay, now here's the problem I see with what you've said. Um, I, I lived um, mo- actually as much of my adult life in Asia, Japan, Okinawa, uh, the Philippines, uh, all uh, Vietnam. Right. A lovely tour. Um, so I understand and know what Asians eat. And I don't like all that much of it. And I, I think that what they eat has a very great deal to do with, you know, the fact that they uh, they live so long. Certainly in Okinawa, well, that's true. Well, perhaps perhaps that's part of the equation. But in uh, in Monaco, let me tell you, the diet is pretty, uh, you know, is is is, is pretty, pretty rich. And uh, pretty American eye or Western eyes. I'll give you that. And, I, uh, Monaco uh, is an interesting you know, the place. Champagne, the champagne runs runs. It does uh, flows easily. Okay, then what is your explanation for it? Well, it, the explanation is really clear. Money. These people are following an anti-aging lifestyle. They're getting the best uh, preventive medicine that is to be had on the planet right now. Both uh, the ladies in in Bergen County are right across the river from New York, and New York is a mecca of advanced medical technology and a big stronghold for anti-aging physicians. The women in Bergen County are availing themselves of these anti-aging therapies and preventive medicine therapies, Mm. and so are the the you know the uber wealthy in Monaco. And what I'm saying is, is that okay. proof positive, the best kind of proof, not not some laboratory rat or some test tube filled with some, you know, black box molecule. We're talking about. I'm talking about thousands or millions of people mm. who are proving that anti-aging medicine, not anti-aging as we talked in the beginning, you know, not the marketing of anti-aging, but anti-aging medicine, the kind of stuff that my doctors of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine are practicing, it's working, and it's working better than anybody okay. ever thought possible. All right, I believe and, you. I believe okay, you. So in answer to the, the gentleman's question, you know, that in, you know, in... in are we on course? Yes, we are. We're on course, right. and we're on course at a much faster tra- trajectory than anyone thought was possible. All right. Uh, I'll buy it all. Um, I will ask this. To get in on anti-aging medicines and therapy, it's expensive, right? Let's That's not kid not. anybody. It's expensive. Well, it's expensive if you're going to do it with the best doctors at the best institutions. Always. With all the advanced technology that we have to offer and the hormonal replacement therapy, too. Right. That can be expensive. But if you're, you know, if you're like me and you're a little frugal and, you know, you're on a budget, uh, you can do an entire anti-aging medicine program to the level of about 90% of everything yes. for less than four thousand dollars a year. Four grand. Well that that's still money. It's money, but it's 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 uh, I look at it as all, all right, straight out question. That four grand a year. Yeah. What's it gonna buy you? It's gonna buy you probably about uh, thirty different nutrients every day. No 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 no. What's it gonna buy you an extended life? 
Oh, well, how can I answer that? You know, I don't I know. I, but by, it, I can talk in generalities. Okay, do that. Okay, and the generalities are, you know, the, this is what these, these, these people are doing in Monaco or doing in Bergen County. This is what most people are doing who are on an anti-aging medicine program. Okay. And so the, the anti-aging dividend, as it exists today, if you want to choose between being an American Indian and in uh, North Dakota with uh, with uh, free government health care mm. versus the state-of-the-art anti-aging medicine, uh, that dividend is about 25 years of age. So let's say you're not getting all the hormones and all the, the tests that you might have otherwise, you're still going to get 15, 20, you're still going to get 15 years. 15, 15, 20 years, that's a long time to extend and, life. And that's, and that's youthful lifespan. I'm not talking about stuck in a nursing home. Yeah, I hear you. It, with an IV in your arm and a right. tube up your nose. Right, right, about, right. You know, feeling and looking like a great 65-year-old when you're 75, 85, maybe 95. Sounding good. All right, let's discuss Lex the Wonder Dog. <laughs> okay. That seems like quite a jump from where we uh, just yeah. were. But I guess it relates somehow. How? Okay, well, oh, my goodness. Back when I was a young man, uh, before I even knew you, Art. <laughs> Hundreds of years ago. <laughs> uh, I had a medical practice in Wisconsin, and I had a, an Airedale that I, I, I acquired through Airedale Rescue. Uh, and he was three years old when I got him. Yes. And he was the cutest thing. I mean, this guy was so cute and so smart and such a great dog. I already love him. Okay. And uh, no, he was he was like right out of FAO Schwartz. When he walked, you thought he was going to drop batteries out of his behind. He was that <laughs> cute. My daughter so, would say rainbows, but sure, go ahead. <laughs> anyway, um, when I, I was involved uh, from the very beginning of my medical practice, even though I did uh, uh, internal medicine, I did uh, sports medicine, pain management, and uh, rehabilitative medicine. Uh, and I had a large practice uh, there in Wisconsin, and uh, my practice was out of a farmhouse, mm -hmm. a converted farmhouse. And my dog was right there in the front yard, and so all my patients got to see my dog. And you know, they noticed that it, you know, at age, uh, you know, at, at, at age eleven, you know, he's Nairdale, a big dog, and uh, big dogs tend to get old around age ten, eleven, twelve. Mm -hmm. and they don't last much longer than that, frankly. Right. And Lex was doing what big dogs do, and he was turning gray, and he had a gray nose, and his uh, black and tan, you know, uh, you know, uh, flanks were were turning all gray. Got it. And his, uh, you know, hindquarters, he was getting arthritis, and he Got couldn't it. move around too fast. And people would chide me; they'd say, "Hey, Dr. Clatch, you always talk about preventive medicine. You always talk about, you know, uh, you know, uh, longevity and all this stuff. You know, how come your dog's growing old?" And I said, well, that's what dogs do, you know. He's an old dog. And they said, well, that's no good. And and, and they, they, they bugged me and to the point where I said, well, you know, maybe I'll try some of this stuff on my dog. So you experimented on your dog. I did. I experimented on him, and I put him on hormone replacement therapy and nutrients, and I put <laughs> him on uh, rehabilitative exercises, and I did some physical therapy with him. Yes. And... Uh, and I was amazed. I was frankly amazed uh, how well he responded, because in a matter of weeks he started getting up and getting active, and in a matter of months he had actually turned completely uh, transformed. His hair had gone almost completely you know, gone. The gray was completely gone. His nose had gotten mostly black again. He had cataracts. The beginnings of cataracts. Those were you know un uh, unnoticeable. Uh, he was active and healthy and, 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 you know, bouncing around like a dog who was, according to my vet, uh, uh, to a dog that was eight years of age. Wow. And then he started to burrow out from underneath the fence in the backyard to get out to chase after this uh, golden retriever down the block. He liked blondes. I, I understand. He had renewed he interest. Fixed. Yes. But that's how well his rejuvenation was working. Okay. And Lex went on to the ripe old age of almost 17. Oh, that's really old. It's incredibly old. The old according to the American uh, uh, Kennel Club, uh, the oldest Airedale they had on record was about 17 and a few months. Well. And Lex was just ready to turn 17, and he had a stroke, 
and I nursed him back from the stroke, and uh, th- and he was fine for a couple months, and then he t- took sick again, and he lost control of his, you know, of mm-hmm. his uh, yes. things, and uh, he, he just wasn't there anymore. His, you know, when you look in in in, in, you know, in someone's eyes. Right. Your dog's eyes, and they're looking back at you. You know right. they're there. Sure. Well, he wasn't there anymore. The, my my dog had gone. Now I still had the body of my dog, the shell. All, uh, Alzheimer's was, of some sort, or it's hard to say. Yeah, okay. I don't know what was. Okay, there. I get it. Well, but, but on the other hand, there. doctor. Okay, I get it. And so I put him down. Yeah, I get it. All right. What I'm saying is, is I wasn't going to keep him around as an as, a, as an experiment, uh, because the quality of his life was gone. But mm, that's, fair. Is, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, and I've got a, po- a counterpoint, maybe. But he, he was the reason, and he was what showed me and, and convinced me that radical anti-aging was, in fact, possible. Okay. Because Ed recovered so dramatically in such a short period of time. All right. I had a cat. I lost my cat um, about, like, a couple of months ago now. It was very hard. Very, very hard. My cat's name was Yeti. I had right. Yeti when you and I interviewed. Yeti died at 23 years of age. Wow. Yeti ate normal cat food. Mm-hmm. So, what? Good genetics? Well, good genetics, good loving. I'm sure you took the best care of him. Constantly, and, yes. Uh, maybe he liked being around with you. I don't he know. He totally did, yes. <laughs> and he hung around as long as he could. He he too had arthritis, um, and uh, his hair had changed. And we but uh-huh. we took care of him very carefully and lovingly. And he he really did until. But if uh, for, for if, a cat that's old, that's very old. But if what I'm saying is is you know the technology is here now with hormone replacement therapy and advanced antioxidant therapies and rehabilitative therapies and there's also cytokines and stem cells and some other things that we have now that we didn't have before where you can actually reach in and retool the gene- um, the, the, the metabolism uh, and you know make an older animal into a younger animal and it shows in life expectancy it shows in quality of life and their, and their energy levels and their performance. Can you do the same thing to a human? Uh, I certainly hope so. That's what I'm doing to myself every day. I've done that to my mom, to thousands of my patients, and my doctors of the academy are can, are doing that for tens of millions of patients every day. So are you pooping rainbows? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, are I you getting... To, uh, I uh, think I'm a little too close to really... <laughs> yeah, I'd have to have someone uh, take a look from a distance. <laughs> I mean, you know, are you, uh, is your hair, uh, getting darker? Is, are, are your muscles building? Is your muscle mass building? Uh, is whatever arthritis you had retreating? You know, all the normal I, questions. That... You know, for, for myself, and I am not like, a a, 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 a tremendous, uh, specimen. You know, I'm not an Olympian. I'm not someone who was, uh, you know, uh, you know, me, you know, a, a fantastic athlete throughout okay. my life. I've been more of a cerebral kind of guy, you right. know, a, more of a couch potato, frankly. And, uh, you know, I'd spend, uh, you know, you know, uh, right now I spend about four hours a day on the Internet, another four hours with my journals, and that's in addition to a full day's, you know, uh, work schedule. Right. So, uh, and uh, people routinely guess me at 15 years younger than my uh, than my uh, than my chronological age, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, am I you know am I you know 15 years younger biologically? Well, when I look at my laboratory results, I I'm, I am probably five, seven, eight years younger biologically than I am if I was to you know measure sh- look at those measures compared sure. to my chronological sure. age. So I look better and I test out better younger. Than, than I do otherwise. And most of these uh, patients who are doing anti-aging therapies do the same thing. They actually look better, and they, uh, and on objective uh, biological measurements, they test out younger as well. And we're able to do all kinds of things to reduce the risk factors for cancer, diabetes, heart disease, mm-hmm. uh, cancer. And so if you don't die of those four major you know, leading causes of death, yes, then statistically, you're going to see your 100th birthday and beyond. 
Interesting. Your 100th birthday and beyond. Uh, isn't there also, aren't there other break points? Uh, this is just Art Bell having an observation of life, but it seems to me like a lot of guys in their early to mid, even late 50s, tend to drop dead of heart attacks and stuff like that. And then, I don't know, it just seems to me that if they make it into their 60s, 65, 70, then they're going to make it for another whatever. It, it seems like once or, or there are points of hurdle. Is is that? That's probably true. I mean, from a statistical point of view, uh, as a man, you're probably, you know, looking at 50, 55 is a very dangerous age. Right. And if you can get past that into 60s, uh, then you're probably going to be all right until your early 70s. But you know, every every year you live longer is it's better. You know, the statistics just get better and better for living that much longer. Okay, all I right. Mean, it's it's really pretty exciting. All right, doctor, stay right there, and we'll be right back. This is exciting stuff, actually, folks. With lots of things to talk about, it is possible to live longer. You got to have the box, but you can definitely live longer, another fifteen years. Does that sound good to you? In that darkest time between dusk and dawn, from the high desert, it's Art Bell's Midnight in the Desert. Now, here's Art. Here I am, Dr. Klatz. Dr. Uh, Ronald Klatz is my guest, and he's good stuff. It's anti-aging medicine. Holly, <laughs> new listener, she thinks, uh, Art, you seem off tonight, you're angry. No. No, Holly, I'm not. You are a new listener, and I'm glad to have you, but I'm um, not, not at all angry. In fact, I'm in a superb mood. I just, I'm not the wuss of a talk show host that you're probably used to listening to, Holly. And I have strong opinions. I have a very dry sense of humor, and you'll eventually get used to me. Dr. Klatz, welcome back. Well, thank you, Art. Can I mention our website? No. You sure? Yeah, of course you can. Okay. Um, you know, everything I'm talking about between my dog Lex and hormone replacement therapy and some of the costs of these therapies and, you know, probably everything that we're going to talk about. Not right. Anything, but, you know, most things are online at worldhealth.net, worldhealth.net. And that's the official website of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. We have 26,000 physician members in 120 countries around the world. And if you go to worldhealth.net, there's a free newsletter that's called Longevity Magazine. And every week we go through about 400 journals just pulling the articles that have to do with uh, improving the quality and the quantity of the human lifespan or improving uh, you know, human performance, whether it be, you know, uh, sports performance or memory or uh, the mm -hmm. prevention of cancer. Uh, I mean, it's really useful stuff, okay. and people love it. It's award-winning, and you can sign up for it for free only if they're your listener aren't. Well, but, now that's uh, a pretty good deal. <laughs> it is. But they it can is. sign up for it for free at worldhealth.net, and... Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's how will it's you know? Commercial, by the way, we uh, don't sell I, any. I get it. How will you know if they're my listeners? Well, they'll just say that they are. Okay, I mean, and you, if they're not, they should be, right? <laughs> yeah, if they're not, don't even give them another minute. All right, so um, back. Thank you, Art. You bet. Uh, back for one second to Lex the Wonder Dog. Did you do anything for Lex uh, during the course of your? experiment that you could not legally do to a person today? Uh, yeah, think hard. That's a hard question. Let me think. There probably was not. Okay. There probably was not. You see, Lex got, got treated back when, and so uh, stem cells were not available, and I didn't use stem cells on Lex. If I did, I'm sure I would have gotten a better result. Uh, but I got a great result with him. I mean, I got lots. Oh, no, I, I understand. I was just curious. Um, um, 
I mean, it was no, experimental. No, no. Everything so. that we did with him was 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 easily available, and really, that's what I'd like you know the listeners to understand is that you can do about seventy percent of an anti-aging medicine program without even a physician. Hmm. If you're willing to read the, the journals, and, and not the journals, the books, and I have 42 books in print right now on anti-aging, and wow. you don't have to read my books, but I mean, the world is full of books on anti-aging medicine right now by really good people, and not, and not just me. Uh, if you want to read this stuff and you want to put together your own anti-aging medicine program, it'll work. And you can do about 60%, 70% of it without any doctor's intervention whatsoever. Amazing. And if you have access to a laboratory, that's 80% of the program. All right. Let's reach out now and talk about stem cells for a moment. Um, how useful and in what way can stem cells be used to either extend life or repair life? Well, we're at the point of repairing life right now, not quite extending life with stem cells. Though, you know, it's hard to say, you know, it's really two, two sides of the same coin. When you fix something, it works better, and when it works better, you last longer. Well, I mean, if you fix something, then a lot of times you're extending it, because if you didn't fix it, well, then, you know, terminal time. Okay, but uh, with regard to stem cells, the technology is such at this moment where stem cells work fantastically well for musculoskeletal problems. For joints, you can rebuild joints, you can improve, uh, you know, uh, fibromyalgia uh, responds very nicely to, uh, to uh, both uh, platelet-rich plasma injections and stem cells. Um, uh, joint, uh, uh, you know, arthritic joints, uh, torn ligaments, uh, there is hardly anything in orthopedics that does not benefit, that cannot benefit from uh, stem cell or platelet-rich plasma or cytokine therapies. Are we talking were, about fetal stem cells? Well, let's not get stuck on the word fetal. It doesn't well, but let's, still, let's tell the truth. Uh, there's okay. two ways, right? Fetal stem cells, and then you can take, I believe, adult stem cells. You, you can take, take, you can take adult stem cells. Yes. You can take stem cells from, uh, from amniotic fluid. Mm-hmm. Okay, now that's not you're not you're not chopping up fetuses. No, no, that. There's no, no. Plenty of, there's plenty of cells in the amniotic fluid. Right. You can take stem cells uh, from fat, which is which is adult stem cells. Mm -hmm. You can take stem cells from the uh, placenta. Okay. Are are I'm sorry, doctor. Are adult stem cells yes uh, as effective as fetal stem cells? It depends on what you're using it for. Okay. Fetal, the, the, the closer you get to fetal stem cells, the more active the cells are and the more pluripotent they are, the more they're able to work and, and transform into various tissues to correct various different problems. The scare is, the scary part is, well, there's two things. First of all, you know, everybody, you know, nobody wants to take uh, an aborted fetus and use it for laboratory experiments. No. That's that's out of the question that's immoral and doctors you know you know doctors don't do that um so we don't do uh fetal cell uh, uh stem cells though you can get fetal cells from the placenta and from the amniotic fluid and you can get uh you know from other sources sure but you can do almost everything you want to do in stem cells, with adult derived stem cells, or with amniotic stem cells, or with placental stem cells, or with stem cells from fat, or from the back of the eye, or the back of the nose, there's plenty of sources of stem cells. I mean, immense amounts of, of sources of stem cells. And if you really need to use fetal tissue, if there is some unique purpose, like for example, there may be some uh, rare uses of fetal stem cells for repairing uh, um, spinal cord um, there are something like uh, something like 700,000 or, or 800,000 fetuses that are sitting in freezers in laboratories just in the United States from uh, in vitro fertilization uh, uh, projects where the, you know they took uh, you know where they took uh, you know eggs and sperm and made them into you know little you know you know like like blastocytes yes. right, sure. or day old, sure. old things and these things are just going to sit there forever until they throw them away 
So you can say, why would you toss this stuff down the drain when you can use this to save someone's life or to take someone who's a quadriplegic and give them the opportunity to walk again? Well, because of people's morality, religion, and politics. Uh, I think it's mostly politics. Uh, I don't hear even when I talk to people or when I was talking I talk to people around the country all the time and the most religious of them all do not have problems by and large uh with uh, uh with uh, stem cells uh that are uh derived from the you know from the right source that do not involve abortions. If it doesn't involve abortions usually I hear no complaints. Mhm. Right. Okay. All right, so stem so cells I think it's more the politics and it's used as an excuse to hinder advancements in certain areas. Unfortunately, you know, it's said that there are more politics in medicine than there are politics, and that's right. been my observation. All right, Doctor, where can we go with stem cells? Uh, you've told me where we are and in repair of some things. When we really uh, grasp this technology fully, where can we go with stem cells? What could be done? The belief is, is that we're going to be able to use stem cells to repair every organ in the body, that we're going to be able to regrow wow. uh, tissue, all types of tissue. We're going to be able to repair all types of tissue, and we may be able to cure diseases such as Alzheimer's disease, uh, liver disease, uh, heart disease. Wow. That's quite, quite a claim. Yeah, because what you have is you have the basic building blocks of of the cells of your body. That's what stem cells are. These are the things, you know, when you cut yourself, what happens? The body forms a scar, it forms a scab, and it sends out chemical messengers. And mm -hmm. in the chemical messengers, it says, hey, come fix this this torn tissue. Right. And what goes to to fix the torn tissue? Stem cells. So we have stem cells in our bodies all the time, but as we get older, we, we lose a number of stem cells and we lose the efficiency of those stem cells. And so if you could have a new supply of young, aggressive, healthy, uh, well-tuned stem cells, then you would, be able to re you would be able to repair yourself from almost any injury. And that's the promise of stem cell technology, and that's why it's so exciting and unfortunately why so many different people are fighting over it. Okay. All right. Um, let's move on to telomeres. Telomeres are... Am I not saying that correctly? No, tel telomeres is... Is that okay? Correct. All right. These are like, I don't know, like a burning fuse inside of you. In other words, That's they start out... it, actually. Is it? They start out at a certain length, I guess, at birth or by the time you reach... I don't know. When do the telomeres start getting shorter? Right away, or well, they, is it... They, they, they start to shorten immediately. Uh, the, the telomeres are, um, are the end pieces, the, the end caps of the DNA. You know, DNA are like uh, uh, this, this helix. They're kind of like shoelaces. Right, right. right you right. know how you have the, uh, the little plastic on the ends of shoelaces so the ends don't fray? Sure. Well, unfortunately, those are, th that's our telomeres. And they just get short with every time the cell uh, duplicates itself, it, re it, 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 it reproduces itself, because the cells are always constantly repairing and reproducing themselves. Yes. Okay, and depending on the cell, if it's your skin, it, you know, it happens very quickly. If it's your blood vessel, if it's a, a red blood cell, it's... I think it's like 90 days or 120 days if it's, uh, you know, if it's uh, a brain tissue or something else or bone tissue, it may, may be a couple of years before it reproduces. Hmm. But all the cells in our body are reproducing themselves. And so what happens is, is as the, these cells turn over, the telomeres, uh, you know, get shorter and shorter and shorter. They're like a, a little... Um, uh, you know, little uh, uh, clicker switch, if you will, on your uh, copy machine. It tells you how many copies you made. Right. And when it gets to a certain shorter length, it starts to. Um, I guess the end of the chromosome that is covered by the telomere starts to become exposed, and when that Happens. area of the chromosome becomes more exposed. Things happen that are associated with aging, 
and the body changes in its production of proteins, in its ability to repair DNA, in its ability to be more youthful. And so you don't want really short chromosomes. No. Or really short I, telomeres, I rather. No. Because as the telomeres become shorter, they become more aged right. in their manifestation. I think mine are already short enough. Um, if we could increase the length of these telomeres, if, if there was technology to have a little blue pill for the telomeres, whatever, if they could be longer, would that change things? Well, that's a good question. That's a very good question. The belief is that it would. Experimentally, we see that animals that have, that we've been able to uh, treat with experimental drugs where we've been able to uh, increase the length of their telomeres do become more active and more youthful. But it's not a total key. It's not a total key. It's not a complete rejuvenation. And... The other issue is is that nobody really dies because their telomeres are too short. No? They get older, but they die of old age disease. They don't die because their telomeres are too short and that the, their cells stop mm. reproducing. So, if, so if, it's not the whole story is what I'm saying, and our understanding of it is not yet complete. And worse than that, we don't have a good pill for, for reversing it yet. We have some nutrients, things like exercise, will, short, will, will help to prevent uh, telomere shortening, and antioxidants will help to prevent telomere shortening, mm-hmm. and some oriental herbs will help as well, and there are a couple of chemicals, but the chemicals, unfortunately, are toxic in other ways. So we don't have the ants, we don't have the magic bullet yet uh, for, for fixing telomeres. All right, so we'll even work. if we could be kept alive through your, the other medicines that you have mentioned, and our, we could stay alive so long that our telomeres just cease to exist uh, any longer. Well, no, they don't cease to exist. They just, uh, the end pieces, again, they're the end piece of the chromosome, and they get shorter and shorter and shorter, and they, uh, and as these, and as the telomeres become shorter, they expose certain areas of DNA that lead to age-related changes in the body. But they don't disappear entirely. All right, hold hold tight. I think I want to know more about that. I picture this little frayed telomere, kind of like a frayed rope. I don't know. This is Midnight in the Desert. I'm Art Bell. But it is What's Next, exclusively on the Dark Matter Digital Network, Midnight in the Desert, with Art Bell. Now, here's Art. Here I am, again, thank you. Don't call yet. Uh, we will get to call shortly, by the way, for Dr. Klatz. I know you want to talk to him, and you've got a lot of questions, according to what I'm seeing on the wormhole. So, that always sounds strange if you don't explain it, right? The wormhole is... People who are time traveler members um, have two privileges. One, they can go back and listen to old shows anytime they want. And two, they can use the wormhole, which means you can send me a message as we do the program. So when I refer to it, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, doctor, welcome back. When we were talking about telomeres, and I was picturing them as these, I don't know, little sticks frayed on the end. No? Uh, more like shoelaces. Shoelaces, frayed on the yeah. End. The uh, the uh, DNA is a, is a helix, and uh, you know there are two two strands. Most people, though, uh, there is some talk about uh, some uh, uh, some unique individuals who have more than two strands of DNA. But that's another story. That's more for uh, ufology. But well, that's uh, awfully interesting. Anyway, are there really people with two strands of DNA? Seriously. Well, we we have two strands, but there there is some talk that you know people could have three or four strands of DNA. Well, I would think four. In other words, two double stranded. 
You, yeah. Have you actually seen that? I have not. I'm just I'm just mentioning this out of the blue because you know it's late at night and okay. it seems like a fun thing to say. It is. <laughs> It is. There I can is, imagine there all there kinds of things. That it's possible, and uh, there is. I, I've read a couple of things on the internet where they say that they're, you know, they found some evidence of people with more than than double stranded DNA. I, I I can't say that I've uh, I've confirmed that, and it's really not. You know, I'm not that kind of researcher, but it would be interesting if it was true, wouldn't it? Oh yes, it sure would. But um, uh, telomeres, the end, the end pieces of the of of the chromosome. Uh, are there to protect the DNA, and they do get shorter as 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 people live. You know, every time the the DNA replicates itself uh, through my 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 mitotic division, uh, they click off and they get a little shorter, a little shorter, a little shorter, a little shorter. And uh, in the process of doing that, they open up little uh, sites on the uh, chromosome that leads to the production of uh, of of proteins that are associated with aging related problems mm -hmm. and so the thought is if you could uh, re-establish the original length of the chromosome of the of the telomere on the end piece of the chromosome uh, you would uh, go back to a more youthful physiology and there is some clinical evidence there is some la certainly laboratory evidence to suggest that that is in fact true how can you imagine that might be achieved well the there are chemicals that will regrow uh, the the uh, the telomere, and oh. there are activities that will lengthen the telomere, including uh, very active uh, sports. You know, and that may be why athletes, you know, seem to grow uh, grow older at a slower rate. Hmm. Uh, and uh, but it's uh, it's basically uh, a chemical uh, driven by chemistry, and uh, there are some Chinese herbs that seem to have a beneficial effect. Okay. And uh, also antioxidants, high levels of antioxidants protect the uh, telomere from uh, shortening. Uh, why do the Chinese have all these interesting things that seem to work? Um, my wife, by the way, is only four foot, four feet ten inches tall. When she was young in the Philippines, she took tall pills from the Chinese. Uh huh. Didn't work. <laughs> well, but she's gorgeous. She's uh, absolutely gorgeous. Four ten. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Anyway, um, so the Chinese do really seem to have something for everything, nearly, and uh, whether whether it works or not. But apparently, some of them work. Some of them do work, and they work amazingly well. You know, we're we're kind of um, uh, we're kind of kept in the dark in the Western world. You know, there's more to the world than just Western medicine. There is uh, traditional Chinese medicine, which is a, a, a body of knowledge that's going back over 10,000 years. Right. You, we have uh, Ayurvedic medicine, which is the Indian form of medicine that, go, that goes back like six, seven, eight thousand years, maybe mm -hmm. longer. And uh, then you have the Nep you know, in Nepal and uh, the Tibetan medicine. And then you have the empiric schools in the United States, which are, you know, uh, naturopathy and uh, chiropractic and osteopathy and, uh, you know, a half dozen others that have been suppressed by allopathic medicine, which is what we call MD medicine. Um, but MD medicine was uh, uh, basically came out of the Rockefellers. And they bought up all the, uh, the 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 empiric schools, and they made them into MD schools, and they snuffed out a lot of uh, the empirical medicine that was associated with it in that day in favor of patent medicines. You know, we talked at the very beginning about how expensive medicines are. Sure. Well, patent medicines, you know, cost uh, you know a tenth of a penny to produce, and they can sell them for you know a dollar or a hundred dollars a pill because they're patented. Uh, whereas the empirical medicines, which are you know natural medicines, you know they might cost you know you know three cents, five cents a pill because that's you know they only cost a penny to produce, mm. and they're not patentable. And so uh, from a business again, a bu you know I my my position was that we have let medicine become a business instead of a healing art, and that's why medicine is so uh, you know. Um, uh, messed up, screwed up, completely uh, messed a up. Nice way to say it. I yeah, mean, it, it's it, 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 it's 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 you know we used to call it a something gone toast, 
and uh, uh, and it, it really is. It's Bottom line here, folks, seems to be if you can afford about four grand a month, beginning when you're how old, doctor? Uh, I would have no hesitation recommending starting an anti-aging program as soon as someone sees the uh, first signs of aging, which is usually in, in one's 30s. But in the future, uh, we may start doing anti-aging uh, interventions in utero. As a matter of fact, we're doing them now. We're doing them now. When we find pe- uh, children who are born uh, or who are in utero with uh, heart problems, mm-hmm. we go in and we do uh, open heart surgery inside the uterus. Uh, you know, genetics, uh, we're, we're discovering ways to treat genetic diseases uh, in the uterus. So, I mean, in the years to come, we're going to uh, uh, play with people's genetics and their metabolism earlier and earlier and earlier. But for right now, given the, the state of the art, I would say uh, once someone starts to feel or notice some aging-related disorder or discovers that they have a pre- uh, pre- predisposition uh, because of their genetics, to cancer or heart disease or diabetes, that they should uh, start taking care of it right then and there. And if that's in their 20s, that's great. A child right. born a child born right now could expect to live how long? Uh, the talk is among uh, the insurance companies uh, for women, uh, girls who are born today, uh, seeing a life expectancy of 120. 120 years old. Wow. Okay, doctor, uh, hold tight. My God, I remember... And I'm sure many of you do, uh, that one day, you know, you, you, you go into the bathroom and you're dun, 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 it's gonna be a nice day today and you look and uh, my god, there's a gray hair. What do you do? You don't talk about anti aging, you pull the sucker out. I'm Mark Bell and this is Midnight in the Desert. Please remain where you are. It's gonna get really good. From the high desert and the great American Southwest, this is Midnight in the Desert, exclusively on the Dark Matter Digital Network. To call the show, dial 1-952-CALL-ART. That's 1-952-225-5278. What the heck? Let's open the lines, all right? Begin lining up. Uh, if you want to come on the phone, it's area code 952 952- Two two five five two seven eight. That's nine five two 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 five five two seven eight. If you want to come on Skype, go ahead and groan. I'm going to give out the instructions because a lot of people don't know. If you have a smartphone of virtually any description, download Skype. It's free, right? Skype is free, and then when you get it, become familiar with it, and. Um, Add us to your contacts. Now, how do you do that? Well, it's simple. On Skype, you just hit the little plus sign, you know, like add a contact. And if you're in North America, you put in MITD51. That's as in Midnight in the Desert, MITD51. If you're outside North America in the rest of the world, and we cover it all, same deal. Just hit the little plus sign, add MITD55. That's MITD55 in the rest of the world, and you can call us for free. And when you're on a smartphone, you'll sound like a million dollars. And by the way, if you're listening on your smartphone, yes, there is a solution. If you're listening, uh, just hit pause on what you're listening to uh, when the phone call goes through. So it all works, and we're going to be using that a lot tomorrow night when we play a game called, uh, well, you want to know, go to my Facebook site. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, back now to Dr. Klatz. A couple of other really important questions I want to get out. uh, Well, Art, let me just finish my answer. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, back in in early 2000, the National Institute of uh, Health, which is a very conservative organization, a meeting of their uh, biotechnologists, And even in this meeting, they were talking about life expectancies shortly of 120, 125 years of age. Right. So, uh, you know, you know, we're talking about things that people may not have heard of, but it's not outside of the realm 
of of possibility at all. And frankly, you know, I'm predicting life expectancies of 150 years of age and beyond. We're really on the cusp of a break of incredible breakthroughs across the board, not just in new drug therapies. Uh, there's 467 new drugs under development that any one of which could be a breakthrough in anti-aging. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's uh, new breakthroughs in uh, energy medicine and in uh, light medicine and in, uh, you know, natural, you know, more natural energies uh, that, the, uh, that can be harnessed to uh, help rejuvenate the body and to rejuvenate the cells. And uh, our doctors are working on that, and it's, it's exciting stuff. And you mentioned about health care being so expensive. This stuff is cheap. This stuff is, is almost free, uh, but it's that there's not enough competition, that uh, we have a, uh, an FDA and a government that uh, uh, hinders competition and prevents these technologies from seeing the light of day. I've got it. When we're talking about 120 to 150 or more years, are we talking about productive years? Oh, absolutely. Who wants to be there and if they're in a... Nobody. You know, if they're a grape... Uh, not grape, a, a raisin. Yeah, raisin. You know, no, nobody Better. wants that. Uh, right. We're talking about, uh, you know, seeing, you know, the oldest that, that I want to see myself or anyone else become is a great 65-year-old. Okay. And if you look at the people in Hollywood, I mean, just look at some of the, you know, the Hollywood actors yes. and the actresses. You know, these people are in their 70s and 80s and 85. I know. It's they very suspicious. Fantastic. It is very suspicious, Doctor. And uh, it makes me want to ask you how many... This is. I'm asking you for a guess only. Hollywood stars, do you think, are using this high-end anti-aging regimen? Oh, my God. 90% plus. Yeah, that's what I figured. Actually. 90% plus. We All have right. a huge... I have a huge number of my doctors out in Hollywood uh, and in, in California. California probably the largest uh, uh, largest concentration on the planet. Figures. Uh, uh, there's a huge amount out there, and uh, uh, these people are really uh, availing themselves of it in all ways possible because it works. It works. And uh, everything that I've told you is avail- the, you know, explanations of all this and yes. videos, too. Uh, explaining some of the more complex uh, issues like uh, telomeres mm-hmm. uh, are available on a uh, on my website under Immortality Now. I do interviews <laughs> with the top scientists around the world, and it's Immortality Now. It's on WorldHealth.net, and it's all free for your listeners, of course. Okay. Um, I want to ask you about cancer, uh, the big C. Okay. Uh, where are we with uh, with cancer? I I mean. Are we ever going to cure cancer? Well, there are those who say that it has been cured. It was cured back in the 1930s, and then it was cured again in the 40s, and then the 50s, and the 60s. Now, and what are they talking and about? If you and if you listen to any of the cancer researchers, the cure is always right around the bend. And um, oh boy, this is a you know. Like I said, there's more politics in medicine than there yeah, are. Just tell politics. the truth. What's the deal with cancer? Uh, I think that there are many, many. Okay, I can say this without getting myself into too much trouble. Um, there are other countries in the world that have a much higher cure rate than we do here in the U.S. Why? Because they are open to everything that works. And there is less regulatory harassment of exploring uh, new therapies and natural therapies. And so if you have cancer, you might be better off availing yourself uh, of places such as Germany, uh, Great Britain, uh, Japan, uh, for these can- uh, Korea, do the, these cancer therapies. Do the statistics bear out what you're saying in other words yes absolutely talk to me about percentages of cure rates uh, for any given cancer you want to talk about here versus well, somewhere else look there if we made some good we made some good inroads into into childhood cancers specifically leukemia we've made some uh, good results into into certain uh, forms of cancer like prostate uh, cancers or uh, the cure rate is improving dramatic has improved dramatically. Okay, my question, doctor, was cancer. comparing oh, cure rates oh. here to there. Oh, 
uh, better over there. How much better? Uh, probably uh, a third to half. Oh my God. Yeah. And uh, there are people, there are doctors here who are doing a lot of um, uh, cancer therapies that are out of the box, and they're afraid to talk about them. And they're using alternative cancer therapies, and they're mixing both traditional uh, allopathic cancer therapies, that are, you know, the, the standard of care with uh, you know alternative therapies, and getting much better results. People living longer, having a better quality of life, and in some cases, having outright cures. All right. Um, Fifteen years ago, on my radio program, Doctor, I said that marijuana should be legal. You were absolutely right. It's a, it's it's happening now, slowly but surely. Uh, here in Nevada, we've got medical marijuana. In Colorado and Washington, they've got more than that. They've got go buy what you want marijuana. Mm-hmm. And we're in the middle of a revolution, finally. Fifteen years ago when I said it, people said I was a devil, and I was leading people into a horrible lifestyle where they will rape and pillage and God knows what. Ridiculous. I really took marijuana a lot of Marijuana has been a, has been the cornerstone of uh, drug therapy yeah. in uh, the for the world. For well, the world, for the I last you know, ten thousand years. Yeah, giving Doctor uh, Gupta credit here uh, because I'm just a radio talk show host. He's a medical consultant to a gigantic network. And he blew the top off this, what, a couple of years ago now? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I give him credit for that. And now you, you tell me what you think of marijuana. The um, and There are various forms, oils. There's a plain old smoke in it and, uh, and so forth. Does it help? Well, it helps tremendously. There's, uh, there's a hundred, last time I looked, there was more than 104 different cannabinols. Mm-hmm. Which are uh, 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 ingredients in cannabis, right? Which is the marijuana plant, and um, each one of them has a separate effect. And you do not have to get high. The THC, which is tetrahydrocannabinol, which is the component of cannabis that gets you, that has a psychoactive component that gives you that that yes. that, that, yes. that, that, that buzz. Yes, that can be deleted from the from marijuana. And you can buy it legal. You can buy marijuana legally, by the way, in all 50 states. You just can. It's not the. It's not the THC. The THC is what's the illegal part of it. The legal part of it is the other 103 cannabinols. The other 103 cannabinols do tremendous things with regard to improvement in immunity, improvement uh, protection against. Uh, uh, well, they they have antioxidant effects. They have protection against uh, some aging-related disorders. They are good for arthritis. I mean, the list is on and on and on. They help with sleep, uh, help with anxiety. Uh, you know, uh, some of the cannabinoids stimulate, uh, stimulate appetite, and which is very good for people with cancer because their appetite is, is, is shot because the cancer itself uh, in late stages produces uh, uh, these chemicals uh, in the body that, that ruin your appetite, that just make you feel horrible. And uh, the uh, the marijuana helps that. Uh, it also there are some components of uh, of the uh, plant that actually inhibit appetite. So there's all these various uh, effects that you can get out of this one plant, and that's why for thousands of years marijuana has been uh, one of the most uh, uh, ubiquitous mm-hmm. uh, medicinal herbs on the planet. And uh, is the the real reason, why, by the way, why cannabis was outlawed, because it was. Uh, uh, I'm sure you know this art, but uh, the original Model T Ford, the first car, the first mass-produced automobile, yeah. was designed to run on what? Gasoline? No. It was designed to run on hemp. hemp. Yeah, hemp. I know. Okay. I, I I know. This is another case of idiots. I don't want to sound like Donald Trump, but idiots running the country. Um, I can't think of anything particularly negative about marijuana. Uh, Even in the getting high part, you get high. uh, You get no headache from being high. Uh, When it goes away, it it, it doesn't leave you with a hangover. It just fades away. Uh, People people driving on marijuana... (laughs) Not that anybody would recommend that, but they're liable to be the ones doing 45 miles an hour, not 120. 
Right. So and it, 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 it's just, it has none of the horrible bad effects that they assigned to it that I'm aware of. Right, but it did get in the way of certain industries. It got in the way of the gas booze. industry. How about it got booze? in the way of the uh, textile industry because hemp yep. clothing lasts forever. Yep, yep. Okay, How about booze? Got... How about booze, doctor? I mean, if you I compare don't... the two, booze is horribly damaging. It costs billions and billions every year in the economy from the damage that alcohol does. <laughs> so I would think they would have a big interest in suppressing cannabis until it doesn't exist if they could do it. Right, and hemp, the uh, paper, by the way, the Constitution of the United States yeah. was uh, published on hemp paper. That's right. Uh, the uh, George Washington was the largest hemp farmer in the United States until the 19, what was it, the 1930s, you could pay your income taxes with hemp. Mm-hmm. There's people uh, out there going, was <gasps> a major cash crop of the United States. Are they really saying this? Yes. This is all fact. This is all absolute fact, and what happened was there was a, cons- a conspiracy. Uh, you know, I don't. You know, I don't generally believe in conspiracy theories, but there was a conspiracy uh, at the. You know, among uh, industrialists and the government mm-hmm. to outlaw marijuana because it got in the way of uh, paper manufacturers and uh, clothing manufacturers and pharmaceuticals and uh, you know a few other companies. And they wanted to get rid of it, and by God, they did, and they 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 outlawed it. Mm-hmm. And then they 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 compounded that 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 crime by turning it into the biggest boogeyman in uh, yeah. uh, in the in the war on drugs. What did they do? How Make it a schedule? Uh, it, in stu- in some places, I think it is still a schedule two drug, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. And and what and and that's right. Can, it's a it's a felony, and you could go to jail for many. Oh, many yeah, many years. and that's right in there with like heroin, and a crack cocaine. Yeah. In fact, LSD. I, LSD. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what a horrible uh, thing we did. Two, by the way, Schedule One. Schedule, Schedule One. One. Okay. Even worse. Yeah. Even worse. Yes. Horrible. 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 And uh, so if somebody has cancer right now, and I have some friends that do. Um, they use marijuana, and it helps them tremendously with the symptoms they have. Number one, from the, you know, these body wrecking drugs that uh, people have to take for for cancer. Um, mm-hmm. These chemicals, it helps them fight the nausea. It helps them feel better, and it's against the law. Right. So. Um, what would the downsides medically of marijuana be? Well, I mean, you don't want to, you know, you, you need to understand that it is a, a psycho, there, are, there, there is a psychoactive component in it unless you get the THC depleted oils, which you can. You can get the THC. I have, I have a, a hemp oil right here that I use for uh, joint aches and uh, arthritis, and I use it for, uh, you know, if I get a, a cut or a scrape. Uh, you can use uh, the hemp oil for uh, your skin as a cosmetic. So if you get the THC deleted uh, hemp oil, uh, you have ev- all the ingredients uh, minus the THC, and it's legal in 50 states. Uh, the only downside that I can think of with the marijuana is you don't want to operate motor vehicles with it, uh, and you may end up uh, getting, uh, you know, uh, getting a little you know, uh, sloppy or, you know, foolish or, uh, or lazy if you, uh, if you uh, imbibe on it at the wrong time. Do you know, I think that was the, one of the main things that drove uh, making pot illegal was the government feared that people would become less productive. At least they used that excuse, and you know, there might be something to it. I mean... Yes, somebody might smoke pot and sit back and contemplate the world when they might otherwise have gone and cut the lawn. I don't know, but yeah, but they can also have a you know a, a six pack of beer. Oh well, look, <laughs> the danger to society from alcohol is far, far bigger than anything from marijuana. As I mentioned, right. if I were given a choice, you don't ever want to face anybody driving in the other lane on anything at all. Uh, no, but, but given not. a choice between somebody on pot, somebody on alcohol, a drunk driver, I'll take the pot guy anytime because he's probably crawling along. Mm-hmm. 
Now, the other the other interesting thing about uh, about marijuana is that it's a immune it's immune activating drug. Oh, it stimulates the immune system, and so it has another benefit for people who have autoimmune disorders such as uh, uh, multiple sclerosis and also arthritis and also cancer. So there's a, there's a there's a whole lot of good news to this, and the government themselves published these papers back in the 1970s saying that this the, that this that this substance had tremendous benefit, but it was suppressed. <laughs> the the research was suppressed because uh, I guess they didn't want to get caught, uh, you know, uh, being at odds with themselves. Not only that, but our jails, doctor, are filled to the bursting point um, with many, many, many uh, people who arrested for some level of marijuana, something or another. If we were to empty the jails of the marijuana arrests, they'd be pretty empty. Well, then we'd have room for the illegal aliens. <laughs> oh, my. Well, all right. Um, listen, I did promise everybody that they could try and call in and ask a question or two. You're a very honest, frank, open doctor. I appreciate that. Your website, if you guys want to know more, by the way, is immortalitynow.net. That's immortalitynow.net. Now, that's a little bit misleading, um, or maybe I guess I should say hopeful. We're not going to get immortality now. Well, it depends on what you consider immortality, Art. I'm not looking to be Methuselah at 969 years of age, but if I get to be 150, we're all, you know... Well, immortality, it's a word. It has a meaning, right? Practical immortality. immortality. Not not true, absolute immortality. No. no, All right, that's good. We'll go with that. Opening the phone lines when we come back. Stay right where you are. I'm Art Bell, and this is Midnight in the Desert. Midnight in the Desert spans the world. To call us from outside the U.S. and Canada only, use Skype with a headset mic if on a computer and call MITD55. That's MITD55. That's it. North America, MITD51. My guest is uh, Dr. Ronald Klatz, and he actually coined the term anti-aging medicine. So we've been talking about anti-aging and a whole lot of other things through the night. If you have comments, now's the time. We're going to go to the lines, I promise. Uh, so here we go. Doctor, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go to Ben on Skype. You're on the air with Dr. Klatz. Hi. Hi, Art. Uh, ben in Tucson. Dr. Klatz, just curious. I Just another method of ingesting uh, the THC is to juice the leaves. That's what I do. And okay. uh, you don't get high, you don't get stoned or anything like that. But if you juice the leaves, you get all the nutrients without the THC. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you've heard of that before, but that uh, works very I, well. I have. In order to activate the THC, you need to heat it. It's very interesting. The THC only becomes a psychoactive chemical. There's a, a chemical reaction that c- occurs when you heat it. So people will bake the, uh, <laughs> uh, the marijuana into brownies. That'll get them high. Uh, or they'll smoke it. That'll get them high as well, or they'll vape it. Uh, but, but if you but juice it, you don't have that problem, which exactly. is if the reason it, why I do it. Now, my question for you is this. Lifestyle diseases. So the number two, one and two killers in the U.S. still are overnutrition, eating too much, and smoking. So now in order to live to all these ages, 120, whatever, you're going to have to stop smoking and eating too much and then do everything else. Am I correct or no? Uh, well, you know, there are some people who have smoked a long time and lived to a prodigious old age. You know, there's True. a lot of people who are in their 90s who've smoked their whole life. True. I guess it depends on what you smoke. You know, if you're, you know, there is some argument that uh, natural tobacco is not as bad for you as industrialized 
uh, tobacco. If you look at natural tobacco, it's pretty clean stuff. If you look at the stuff that they sell you in a cigarette, there can be as much as a thousand different chemicals, including some radioactive ones, added to the cigarettes. Wow. You're not a smoker, are you? Uh, no, not no. at all. All right. You do hear these stories, though, about um, people living to be 100 and whatever, and they're sitting there happily smoking away. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm not endorsing smoking by any means. Right. But I'm just saying that if you're going to smoke, you know, smoke the cleanest thing you possibly can, and that's natural tobacco. Boy, I bet the tobacco companies wish they could put you on the air. <laughs> I could be like one of those lucky strike doctors from the AMA That's back right. in the 1950s. They actually can't put anybody on the air. Um, let's go to Utah, I think, and you're on the air. Hi. You know, you know, Art, uh, hearkening back to what we said before, the problem with the U.S. medical industry is not the doctors. I want to make that real clear. It's a lack of, of, of competition and lack of availability of new therapies, that it'd be competition with drugs that would drive the drug prices down and would make uh, uh, more medical care available to a larger number. It's a lack of competition, and the competition is held uh, at the state that it is by the FDA, by the state licensing boards, by the entire system. So we need a system-wide repair. Okay. Having said that, person in Utah, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay. This is Tammy. I, I hear you. Go ahead. Okay. I have a question for the doctor. I was recently diagnosed with cervical spine stenosis, and it was caused from every one of my thoracic and half of my lumbar um, vertebrae are herniated. Do you have any advice for me? Okay. I'm going to stop you, ma'am. I'm sorry, but look. We have a medical doctor on the air. One thing medical doctors don't do, I won't allow him to do, and I doubt he would if I even did allow him to do. We're not making diagnose, diagnosis on the air. We're not going to recommend treatment on the air. That's not a right thing to do, is it, doctor? Well, it's very hard to do it. I mean, it's it's not very fair to the patient either because, you know, all I can give you, all, at the best I could do is give you the, you know, the knee-jerk response, which, you know, may or may not be right, and chances are it's not going to be right because without examining the patient, you really can't know. There's dozens of different types of uh, there you go. stenosis. There you go. Exactly. I'm all sorry. Right. I wish I could help you out further. All right. Another caller. Hi. You're on the air. Hey, Art, this is Jeff calling from Parkersburg, West Virginia. Okay. Uh, I don't want a diagnosis, but I want to give a little bit of background. Uh, three and a half years ago, I had a A1C of 9.1. Okay, look, uh, here, there you go. It's technical. Sir, do you have a question that relates to what the doctor is here for? Yes, I wanted to get his views on ketogenic diets, intermittent fasting, and the conventional uh, doctors going along with the American Diabetes Association, American Heart Association, when they're off, they are often uh, off base and, and and really not even science based. All right, doctor. Uh, I can't argue with the caller. I think that the American Di uh, the American uh, um, so many of these societies are based in, in science that's 30 years old. They don't look at the latest technology. They don't look at the latest breakthroughs. They don't look at the latest research. And uh, they're dogmatic. And they have an opinion, and they won't change it for almost anything. Uh, there is a lot of da data to support you know, various types of diets, including the ketogenic diet. Uh, ketogenic diet is very good for a lot of different problems, including uh, uh, neurological problems, by the way. Uh, ketogenic is being advanced uh, for uh, people with Alzheimer's and neurodegenerative disease, uh, as well as other problems, because uh, the ketogenic diet uh, has, has many benefits in stimulating uh, tissue repair and in using an alternative uh, energy system within the body. Our bodies run on not just uh, glucose, uh, uh, but on, uh, on on ketones as well. <clears throat> With regard to um, uh, fasting, intermittent fasting, yes, great stuff. Great stuff. It uh, helps to uh, detox the body, 
and we are in so we it's there has never been a time in the history of man where uh the human species has been subjected to the level of toxicity from our environment we're being uh, literally poisoned by our food our water our air mm. uh and radio waves you know dare i say not not your radio waves from your show art but no, ours are clean waves. our radio yes waves are yours clean. are yours are healthy but um <laughs> the uh the environment we live in is is polluted to the max uh and it's uh, taking an effect on health on health across the board and people need to wake up to that because even with the best drug therapies with the best exercise and with the best lifestyle if you don't clean up your environment uh you're in big big deep doo doo mhm all right let's go uh to Skype and Anthony Anthony you're on hello there. how are you yeah oh, hi there fine hi that's good hello doctor how are you yes sir hi um art just want to tell you one thing real quick is i been right there from from the beginning with you. Yes, sir. I've never I've never made a call till now. Okay. I'm um, just uh, sorry I found you too fascinating to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, yeah, you, I have a real quick question. I hope this isn't out of line, but you were talking about smoking marijuana. Yes. And the I have a real problem with that. See, why I'm a I'm an I'm an extreme empath, and I've also I was actually going to call once, Art, to help you with your OB problem. But anyways. With my what problem? Uh, Out-of-body experience. Oh, I see. That wasn't a problem. That was cool. Well, no, no. I didn't mean problem. I meant to help anyway, you. Anyway, go ahead, sir. We don't easy. only have so much yeah, time. Yeah, no problem. Go ahead. Okay, so what I want to ask is I am I really get too paranoid, emotional, and way too much on it. I have certain on, on, on what, sir? Yeah. On what? On the on smoking pot. Oh, okay. And I have sarcoidosa, and uh, it's it's uh, a real bad side of it. Okay, well you know what then, don't smoke it. Well, I, I want to know: is there a, a type that I can smoke? Because I've heard that there is. <laughs> there's okay. No probably. Able to tell me. Okay, hold on. Yeah, there's there's probably at least fifty different strains of. Uh, of marijuana that are commercially available and that are uh, cultivated specifically for its level of, of this substance or that substance, and they have different effects. And so in, uh, in, in places like Colorado, you can go into these uh, marijuana, and California too, mm -hmm. these marijuana dispensaries that, 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 that are really, they're more pharmacies than they are anything else. And they will tell you, you know, really, really care carefully and, and to the letter, what the benefits of this strain versus that strain are. Right. And so people who get, you know, there are some there are some strains of marijuana that do tend to make people paranoid or or uncomfortable, and there are other strains that are much more mellow and are much more relaxing, and there are other strains that are very energizing, and there are other strains that are, are frankly um, uh, supposedly open the third eye and are good for meditation and good for yeah. psychic experience. Now I don't know how much of that is 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 actual real, but I know that there is. It's kind of like having a pizza. You know, there's you know there's pizza and there's pizza and there's pizza. Some of them taste a little more Mediterranean. Some of them taste a little more California. Some of them taste a sure. little more, you know, like uh, Pizza Hut, right? Right. So there are different flavors, and uh, if the caller does have a problem with anxiety. Uh, he might be able to find a, spra a strain that is uh, much more mellow and less anxiety-inducing, or you know, or as you say, just don't smoke. Right. Um, okay. Next from Columbus, I believe, with Dr. Klatz. Hi. Yes, this is James from one in Ohio. I had uh, uh, oh, first Bell Gab uh, Roswell's art. Thank you uh, for Dr. Klatz. Go Bell again. I have a very specific question. Uh, I heard him talking about athletes and how they stay younger longer. Right. Now, I've experienced something that's totally different. It's working with the military. I've, I, I joined when I was 17 in the Army and then in the Marine Corps at 20 and had several combat tours, plus I'm a contractor now. And I know this with myself. I made gray, but I still can hump with the young, hump meaning go up mountains in right. Afghanistan, gotcha. Thank you. walk through the deserts, 
And there is something, I think, to that that keeps one young. And I'm now 48. So, I mean, I've been doing this. You know, look, war is a game. It's the ultimate game. And I absolutely to... agree with you. If, you. if you're that active and you're that involved, it'll keep you younger. I think, you know, that's doctors said that. Right, doctor? I agree yes, with that entirely, did. yeah. Yeah, so we agree. And, and that was my question was, what 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 does that? Is it the adrenaline? That was my real question. Is it the adrenaline, the boredom? It's the, it's um, what it is is that when you exercise, you turn on an entirely different set of uh, of of metabolism. You turn on different switches in your genes and in your metabolism mm-hmm. than you do when you're sitting in a chair. Even if you stand up you activate different uh, switches in your, mito- in your mitochondria and in your chromosomes than when you're sitting down. Probably the worst thing you can do for yourself is to sit down throughout the day. The best thing you can do is stand, walk, uh, or move. Uh, motion is associated with a uh, different uh, uh, process of metabolism, and it stimulates. It's not just the exercise. It's the actual movement that stimulates your metabolism to a different level. And that higher level of metabolism is associated with a more youthful level and is more effective at detoxification, uh, at preventing many of the disorders of aging. So being sedentary is perhaps the worst thing you can do for yourself. Okay, Pam, on Skype, you're on the air with Dr. Klatz. Ah, hello. Hi. Uh, What I would like to know is his opinion on, um, you know, we are what we eat, right? GMO food. Okay. Glyphosate-laden vegetables. Okay. Oh, boy. Um, you know, there is a big push from very powerful people um, and from very powerful organizations and from very well-connected uh, political organizations uh, to force GMOs down the throat of uh, of the public, and uh, frankly, you know, uh, what I don't understand is that if uh, the you know the FDA uh, requires extensive testing for safety and for efficacy of every new drug that comes along, but you make a new substance, which is what you do with the GMO plant. You know, if you make a GMO, uh, if you put new genes into a a plant, you have a different animal than you did, you know, naturally. But the FDA just rubber stamps this stuff and lets it out onto the marketplace. Oh, I know Uh, that. That's Michael Taylor runs that now. And isn't he a Monsanto person? uh, I believe he is. Yeah, and same with the FDA. Ma'am, are you asking, are they safe? Are they dangerous? Are they good? Are they bad? What? what? I, I think my opinion... Is you know I want his opinion. Well then, good. Okay. Make it a question. Uh, what I want to <laughs> know is how this affects you know any kind of new medical longevity breakthrough, whether it is defeating the purpose. All right. All right. Well, what you have is you have a big question mark, and the big question mark is GMO foods. And uh, if you're you know if you're intru- if you're into taking care of the most important uh, machine you have, and that's not your car, and it's not your airplane or your boat or your telephone or your cell phone. It's your body. If you're into taking care of your body, then you want to take, you want to be very conservative. And so you should be very cautious about what you put into it, whether it be a new drug or whether it be a new form of food or whether it be clean fuel or clean air or clean water. And so I recommend very, very strongly, if you're going to have, if you have the potential for an extra, you know, 15, 20, 30 years of youthful, productive lifespan, don't blow it on something that could potentially be dangerous. All right. All right. That was kind of an answer. I understand that you want to stay away from anything strictly problematic in, in some sort of legal way. the speed of light in the darkness. This is Midnight in the Desert with Art Bell. Now, 
Here's Art. Here I am. My guest is, uh, guest is Dr. Klatz. Very interesting questions coming. And and here it is again. And I, I think you just got your answer to it, really. It's, hi, Art. Would you please ask doc, Dr. Klatz if he thinks the rise in autoimmune diseases is due to GMO foods? So his answer was, be careful. Right, Doctor? Dr. Klatz? Is that it? Yes, that's the most I can say right now, Art. Just be careful. Okay. And um, on the side of caution. All right. Now, here comes another big one. The The rate of autism in America is in, gone up incredibly. Now, it, it's gone up so far that huh, n- nobody can figure out why. I mean, it's it's way, way up. It's scary. I mean, it was 1 in 500, 400, 300, 200, 1 in 87. It's freaky, freaky stuff. You want to stick your neck out on it at all? Got any Not guesses? Not a chance. <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> oh, too bad. All uh, I can say is that uh, MIT uh, just uh, published a uh, report that at the current rate, uh, autism will... Uh, if something is not done very, very soon, if yes. something that's very serious is not done about autism, that uh, autism uh, could be uh, as frequent as as uh, one in two boys what? Uh, by the year 2030. Did you say one in two? That's right, 50-50 chance. And that's from MIT. Oh, my God. Um, this just a recent report, not not two weeks ago. Unimaginable, unimaginable, um, unsupportable. If that were to happen, that's well, like the that's like the end. It is right now. It's, it's like uh, the end of the world. You know, when I was when I was growing up, uh, the instance of uh, autism was one in ten thousand. Right. Uh, in the uh, in the Amish, it's still one in ten thousand, but in the uh, general public, it's like one in sixty. That's like the end of the world. Eight. That's like the end of the world. It's getting there. One in two. That's that's the end of the world. The world couldn't support that. No. No. All right. Fine. Let's go to the phones. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Who's next? Hit the next button, Arthur. There you go. Hi. Uh, hi there, Art. Uh, I have a question for Doctor. I'm Tom in San Diego. Hi, Tom. Um. Two questions uh, for the doctor back on tobacco. Um, the first one is you always see the statistics about that tobacco is the highest uh, ranked cancer, cancer causing or de- cancer death causing. Right. But you never hear the percentage of people that actually smoke that get cancer, which is the inverse of the question. And the second tobacco question I have is um, I started smoking when I'm 20. If I quit at 60, I know that changes happen in one year, two years, five years. So my question is, what are those changes that nat- happen naturally, and what does his life extension program have to to make a better recovery? Okay. Okay. With regard to an anti-aging medicine program, um, there's an awful lot of detoxification that goes along with anti-aging, uh, and the detoxification is to pull toxins out of the body. Right. Uh, and whether that be through use of spirulina or chlorella or hot saunas uh, or large amounts of vitamin C or other, uh, uh, you know, other, uh, you know, detoxifying nutrients, um, you know, they, the, the purpose is all the same. Even exercise will help to uh, remove toxins from the body. Um, uh, and, and there are a lot of toxins from smoking. Uh, I believe that the statistics are that it takes about seven to ten years to completely reverse or or, or eliminate the risk factors associated with smoking, mm-hmm. uh, such as heart disease and cancer. So it's a it's a long term event, but it's, you should start right now. Uh, the chance you know you you might get lucky and uh, you might not end up with cancer. You might not end up with uh, you know heart disease. Not everybody gets it. Uh, and certainly there are things that uh, that you can do to mitigate it. Uh, you know, there are uh, a tremendous amount of, uh, of, of anti-cancer 
products in the foods we eat, you know, garlic, selenium, um, vitamin D. Uh, these are all strongly anti-cancer. Uh, folic acid. Uh, Before we get too far away, let me invite you to stick your neck out again. And and you can laugh and say no way if you want to. But, um, <laughs> you know, all right, so people are smoking I cigarettes. I you like me, Art. I do. Uh, people... <laughs> People are smoking cigarettes. They're hooked. They're looking for ways to stop. Now right. we have we have vaping. You yes, know you, you know about vaping, right? I do. And, okay. Uh, I know one of the major manufacturers of vaping, and uh, I was not for it if, uh, initially because I wasn't convinced that uh, the you know the uh, the material they use for the vapors, the right. uh, propylene glycol, was all right. that great for you. Basically, but, vegetable oil, isn't it? Uh, well, it's uh, it's propylene glycol, and sometimes they use vegetable oil. Yeah, okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's much less toxic than what's in a cigarette, and it turns out that, you know, quite to my surprise, that the studies are showing that vaping has a very good effect at helping people quit because the apparently the reason why people smoke is not so much the nicotine, but they have this psychological oh, yes. desire to play with a cigarette and watch the smoke. And Absolutely. Everything that goes with it. Yes. You know, there's a whole uh, uh, mantra um, you know, associated with it, you know, meditation perhaps, and people like that. And they can get the same feel from uh, a vape cigarette, and it has a high, a very high level of success in getting people to quit. I think it's like over 50% which is much, much higher than any of the drugs. We're not going to find out years later that it you know, causes somebody's leg to get shorter than the other one or something, are we? I doubt it. I really do. It okay. Seems well, that's a good answer. Honest answer. Thank you. Stay right where you are. darkest time between dusk and dawn from the high desert it's art bell's midnight in the desert now here's art this is really good stuff dr claps is my guest we're talking about life extension i want to add dr claps is not selling anything you're not listening to an infomercial or any baloney or junk like that this is just the state of the art, and we actually have branched off into many, many, many different areas, some of which he can talk about and some of which, wisely, he does not talk about. And I don't blame him. I understand the implications. Um, Scott, you're on the air with Dr. Klatz. Yo. Yeah, good morning, Art. Morning. Uh, good, good morning, Doctor. Yes, sir. Okay. Um I've got a question, but I've got a quick comment to the caller before who was having trouble with panic or whatever from smoking pot. If he can find a strain called God's Gift, I think he'll be favorably impressed. All right. That said, you have a question? Yes, I do. None of um, us are supposed to be giving out any kind of medical advice. So. Oh, uh, okay. Sorry. I understand sorry. God's Gift. Um, do you, does the doctor... Doctor, do you know of... Um, any advances in stem cell research that would suggest they could be helpful to people with surgically caused problems with the pituitary or hypothalamus? You know, that's, a, that's kind of a, um, you know, very advanced and esoteric therapies. I don't think that, you know, I don't know of any stem cell researchers who are working on stem cell for hypothalamus or pituitary. However, stem cells are generally good for a lot of things and uh, you know if you find if you're able to find a stem cell researcher who's working on uh, stem cell um, uh, therapies for uh, uh, dementia or for Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. or for neurocognitive problems of the brain uh, you might uh, you, you know you might get a beneficial effect on uh, you know with these with these other tissue uh, these other uh, you know um, structures within the brain as well 
another interesting thing that's uh, been happening. I mean, the the area of uh, of neurology is ex- is exploding, and uh, the uh, you know a new therapy that's coming to the fore, which isn't exactly stem cells, but does work in a way to stimulate the natural repair mechanisms within the cells is um, laser-assisted photomodulation or, uh, uh, or photobiomodulation. Hmm. And uh, what they're doing, uh, uh, quite s- shocking actually, it was developed originally uh, by NASA uh, for use in the space uh, program back in the 70s. And then it, it got, uh, you know, they found that this stuff works. They, what they were doing was they were looking at the effect of light on cells. And they found that there's certain specific frequencies of red light okay. stimulate uh, cell repair. All right, doctor, can I stop you for a second? Sure. I have a really bad back. I don't mean a little bit of a bad back. I have a bad back of bad backs. It's, you know, it uh, frequently will stop me, uh, period. Uh, I can't walk. Mm-hmm. I can't walk. So that that's right. called a full stop. And uh, I've been seeing a doctor for years. Right. Okay, so I have tried something, and uh, here it is. I went to a company uh, who sells these LED pads, very expensive. I paid about a thousand bucks for what I got. It's right. a, it's a pretty good size pad, doctor, mm-hmm. and it has. Um, very strong red uh, LEDs on it. Yes. And you can set the frequency of those uh, LEDs that are modulated. Mm-hmm. Um, you can set the duration. Uh, it gets quite warm. They're very powerful. And I've used it on my back, and never in all my life have I had anything that actually worked for my back but this is doing it, and that's why I stopped you because you were headed right there, so I couldn't that's help myself. Exactly what I'm talking about. These, these, it's it's incredible, the the benefit of energy, uh, of the right frequency on the cells of the body. What does it do? It 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 stimulates the the natural repair mechanisms within the cell itself. It actually energizes the cells, and it turns on DNA repair. It turns on tissue repair, really, and it mitigates uh, some of the pain pathways. It interrupts some of the pain pathways. Well, that's no and, joke. And they're using this right now. You know, dentists have been using this for uh, for tissue repair in the mouth for gums. Uh, veterinarians are using it uh, for uh, wound repair in dogs really? and in horses. Really, uh, and the, about the only person is not about the only people who are not using it is again. Uh, the physicians, because it's not FDA approved for most doctors. Well, look, I, I'm telling you, and I'm and giving you, variants. I'm telling you the straight stuff here. Um, I was at a, at a point where <laughs> I might have given up um, on ever having my back ever be better. Uh, I oh, do it for about an hour a day, and I've been doing it now for well, almost... an hour a day is probably a little bit too much. Maybe. Yeah, you're probably doing a little bit too much there. I would, I would I'll talk to you off air about that. But right. uh, the important thing is, is that you have personal experience with uh, photomodulation or photobiomodulation. Yes, sir. And this stuff does work, and it's been proven. And there's there's hundreds of papers, and now they're trying it out with uh, with Alzheimer's and with neurodegenerative disease. And they're finding that actually, uh, in some cases, will regrow portions of the brain. Incredible. And so the listener who is talking about stem cells uh-huh. uh, for, uh, you know, pituitary and for other areas of the brain might have some benefit with neuromodulation neuro, or uh, photo, photobiomodulation, which is this red, these red LEDs. But they have to be the right frequency, <laughs> yep. they have to be the right amount of time, right. and they have to be the right intensity. Well... I've never found anything that worked until it came to this. I mean, there were some temporary things. You can go to a chiropractor, and uh, frankly, my experience is that, you know, they do what they do, and you feel better for about an hour, even most of the day, and then you're right back to where you were. Nothing ever really had a significant lasting effect until I tried this. Now, this is a technology that's been underappreciated and has been... Uh, underutilized for the last 30 years. And the reason why is it's not a pill. 
and uh, the you know the the, the bias in the pharmaceutical uh, uh, in the FDA and the bias in the medical industry is if it's not a pill it's it can't be that good for you and so it's a therapy that's been underutilized and it's just now become we're beginning to see the incredible benefits of this stuff because it works on a on a basic level it actually works on a cellular level to help in repair and detoxification of the tissue okay all right enough of that back to the phones and all of you you're on the air with dr klatz hi hi hello Are you talking to me yes i am turn hello. your radio or device off immediately yeah i didn't know it would be that quick okay i'm rebecca i had a question yes um I take a lot, I use a lot of anti-aging creams, and none of them seem to really work, and I was wondering what the doctor might recommend, especially for women, like, maybe that aren't super expensive for an That's an impossible question for me, unfortunately, because, again, it comes down to, you know, there's a million different anti-aging creams out there. Some of them are beneficial, some of them are not, and a lot of it depends on the individual. I wish I had an easy answer for you, but I don't. Okay. Uh, except to say that there are things that do work. All right. Um, hello, you're on the air with Dr. Klatz. Hi, this is Julia. Hello, Art. Hi, uh, Julia. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Uh, so, <clears throat> Doctor, if you could uh, just briefly address things like um, electric medicine, like the Bob Beck protocol. Um, there's also this, like, EERT um, no, I'm sorry, it's EPRT. It's using, you know, microcurrent to help bones heal. I'm just interested in your opinion on that. I am too. Sure. Thank you. Well, you know, a lot of this, again, goes back to energy medicine, goes back to stimulating the cells of the body, stimulating the, the, uh, the nervous system of the body in very subtle ways. Uh, and we don't understand much of that in the West. Uh, you know, the, the, the Chinese seem to have a better understanding of energy medicine than we do because of their long history and, uh, you know, acceptance of acupuncture. But clearly, this stuff does work, and clearly this stuff does have a benefit. And, uh, there, you know, for people who are interested in this, you know, excuse me if I hawk uh, my website, but worldhealth.net, uh, there's uh, probably about... Uh, a um, hundred papers online that are free for you that talk about these various aspects of energy medicine and whether it be uh, uh, photonic energy which is light or whether it be microcurrent or whether it be ultrasound or whether it be uh, magnetic nerve stimulation this is a whole new area of medicine that will come into its own within the next 10 15 years because we're just beginning to start looking at these energy technologies in a meaningful way. And uh, when we do, we will find miraculous, miraculous results, just as you've experienced with uh, red LED for Amazing pain. Amazing stuff, yeah. Okay, Mac uh, on Skype, you're on the air. Yes, I'm calling from Arkansas. Okay, I'm but you're going to have to get really close to your computer because it sounds like you're in a hollow tunnel. So look for that little tiny hole in the computer where the mic is and get right up to it. Is that better right there? Yes, it is. All right. Thank you. Uh, I have two questions I will try to make quick. Uh, my first question is, uh, you were talking earlier about GMOs and, and marijuana, and uh, it seems to me that there's a possibility that some of the marijuana that is sold in the marijuana stores today um, has been taken from its actual natural state, uh, like possibly chemically grown? Uh, is that a possibility? And well, number two... They, 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 they definitely, you know, bred stronger and stronger and stronger. There's no doubt, doubt about that. And they've bred for specific treat, medical treatment as well. Yeah, but okay. I don't believe that they've inserted... Right. Uh, uh, genes that have no natural right. uh, uh, reason for being there. Not necessary. Anyway, caller, go ahead. Yes, and my other question was, uh, uh, what is the basic element in uh, cannabis, uh, marijuana, if you will, that helps uh, like patients like myself with RLS? Uh, RLS is a real difficult problem to treat. It's uh, very painful and it's very complicated, uh, though it certainly would not be out of the realm of uh, 
you know, certainly would not be worth it. It would would be worth a try of uh, of trying uh, uh, the cannabinoids with it. Certainly the uh, the oils mm-hmm. uh, on the limb because uh, the type of pain that RLS is uh, uh, is associated with, uh, uh, you know, might be very uh, well modulated uh, by some of the cannabinoids. Well, all right. Um, somewhere in Wisconsin, I believe you're on the air. Thank you, Arthur. My name is Riley. I'm calling from Osceola, Wisconsin. Hey, Riley, you're going to have to speak up good and loud. All right. Uh, any better? Better. All right. Um, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Uh, just a quick question in regards to uh, uh, progress in the anti-aging field in regards to type 1 diabetes. Okay. Um, diabetes is a very important issue in anti-aging because everybody has diabetes. Uh, I shouldn't say it. Let me take that back. <laughs> Everyone is on their way towards getting diabetes. Right. If we live long enough, we all develop uh, failure of our pancreas, uh, and we develop insensitivity of the cells of our body to insulin. And so we develop uh, diabetes or diabetes-like syndromes. And so there are a number of, of, of there are, there's an awful lot of research on new drug therapies. There's an awful lot of research on artificial pancreases. Uh, and there are artificial pancreases on the market, you know, where not just, uh, not just pumps, but actual, uh, you know, pancreas that, 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 that adjusts insulin output depending on your blood sugar. There are better and better methods of determining blood sugar. Uh, the latest thing I've seen is a, is a, a contact, <clears throat> like contact lenses for your eyes, right. that actually are, have Bluetooth embedded in them, a Bluetooth-type uh, transmitter, an RF transmitter that transmits to your cell phone what your level of, uh, of uh, glucose is. Wow. So, uh, you know, having diabetes was a pretty uh, dismal diagnosis uh, just 20 years ago, but today it's there's so much happening and so much good stuff. And with stem cells, I really believe that there's going to be a cure for not just type 2 diabetes, but type 1 diabetes uh, very shortly. There certainly is in the laboratory right now with animals. Some people seem to acquire diabetes uh, very early in life, and other people, as you say, very slowly move toward it at, at toward the end of their life, right? Yes. The people who develop it early are people who have an autoimmune uh, reaction and have uh, essentially they kill off uh, the cells within the pancreas that produce insulin. Uh-huh. And so uh, th- this is an autoimmune disorder. Uh, as we grow older, it's a combination of autoimmune uh, and desensitization to, of, of the cells to insulin. Uh, but much easier to treat uh, type 2 diabetes, which is adult onset diabetes, than it is juvenile diabetes. And also juvenile diabetes causes more damage because there's much wider swings of uh, of glucose. All right, Doctor, you have been a joy to have on the air. Really, uh, you you're are. well-humored and everything, and you've got a lot of information, and we don't have a lot of time. So if you want to get in a plug here at the end, do, go for it. Okay, well, the uh, American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine is the world's largest preventive medicine society. We have 26,000 members, physician members of the academy. We've trained over 150,000 doctors in 120 countries around the world, and uh, we're we're a nonprofit organization, uh, and we're here specifically for the purpose of advancing uh, the -the state-of-the-art of preventive medicine and to train physicians in that technology. And so if you're looking for an anti-aging program, find a doctor who's a member of the Academy, and you can find them online at www.worldhealth.net, worldhealth.net. We have a free newsletter that uh, I'll send to all of your listeners if they go online and sign up for it. It's right there on the home page at worldhealth.net. And there's even a, um, there's even a forum that they can leave questions, and doctors will answer their questions for them mm-hmm. online. So a lot of benefits, and it's all free, and uh, that's because we're a nonprofit organization. We're out there just to, you know, advance the science and help the public. Way to go, doctor. It's been a pleasure yeah, having yes, you, you on are. the air. I'm so happy you're back. <laughs> Thank you, and we will do it again, my friend. You bet. Good night. Uh, stay on the line. I want to talk to you about something else. All right, all right, all right. All right. I will.
actually. Private and secret medical advice. Keep an eye on my picture. From the sound of his voice, I might be getting younger and younger and younger and younger. 